Joe has $200,000 saved up and he wants to retire. Now he figures that during retirement, his income is going to be about $2,000 a month. And he also calculates that his expenses are also going to be about $2,000 a month. Now he figures that his income is going to increase at a rate of 5% per year, but he's concerned about inflation. He thinks inflation may increase and eat up his savings. So he wants to model a 10% increase per year in expenses to see what inflation is going to do to his savings over time. So here I'm in the LT SPICE program and we've set up an electrical model to simulate Joe's retirement. And recall that we're using standard simulation conditions, which means that all the capacitors are one farad, C1, C3, C2, one farad. That means that for one coulomb of charge on this capacitor, it creates one volt. And one volt or one coulomb represents a thousand units. So for example, one volt at the savings node represents a thousand dollars. Five volts at the savings node, five thousand dollars. So here we've set his initial savings for two hundred thousand dollars by doing the spice directive. This dot IC voted savings equals two hundred. So that's going to set the savings at initially two hundred thousand dollars. Now his income is modeled by these three components on the left and his expenses are modeled by the three components on the right. And notice that the G1 component adds his income to the savings and G2 removes savings from this capacitor or removes charge from the capacitor. Now the income Initially, we're going to set this node called income at two volts, which means that it will produce two amps of current in this G1 current source because we've set the gain equal to one. So it's going to take two, multiply it by one, and create two amps of current flow, which will model 2,000 a month in savings using the standard conditions. Now the G3 is a current source that's going to provide a 5% increase per year on the charge on capacitor C2. And this is the gain factor to do that. Now this gain factor we got from our, our table of interest rate versus gain factor that you can find at economicsimulations.com. Click on tutorial, then click on modeling interest and you'll get that table. Now we've done a similar thing over here for the expense model. This node is labeled expense. We do an initial condition. We set the expense equal to two. Or in this case, it'll, charge, it'll cause two amps to flow in G2. And two amps, recall in standard conditions, models $2,000 a month. Now we've set the gain of this G4 current source to 10% by giving it this number. Again, that came from our table. So let's, let's run a simulation on this model and see how long this $200,000 is going to last Joe. So I'm going to select the run icon. First, let's look at his income. Let's probe income. And let's probe expenses. Now here we see that the income is increasing at 5% per year and here we've simulated 160 months later. Now the yellow shows the expense node and that increases at a faster rate. That's increasing at 10%. So let me get rid of this. 
And let me re-simulate. And now let's probe the savings node. And let me expand it so you can see that just a little better. So here we see Joe's savings. So here he starts out with $200,000. And it doesn't fall off very rapidly. After 20 months, most of the money is still there. Even after 80 months, there's very little has been depleted. But if you look at another 80 months, we go over here to 160 months, and his savings is virtually depleted. So I measured this on a previous simulation, and his savings gets depleted in 161.7 months. Divide by 12, that turns out to be 13 point five years. So the bottom line is that the 10% increase in expenses is really dominating in this latter period over here. 